Hello, Hello everybody, everybody and welcome to another One Stop Wrestling Podcast. I'm Alex and today I'm joined by the respectable Rohit and the astonishing Alfonso. And for today's podcast, we're going to have a bit of fun. Um, with the WWE draft coming up, we thought we'd put our, our own little spin on like a, a fancy trade booking show. And we're going to basically pick one superstar from AW, one wrestling, and one from TNA to each get traded to WWE. And then we're going to pick one superstar from WWE to go the other way. So it's going to be a bit of fun. Um, we're going to, you know, work out which superstar we think might do best in WWE from each of those three companies and the other way around. It's going to be interesting to see what names we come up with. Um, Rohit, this was your idea. So I'm really looking, actually really looking forward to this one. I think it's a great idea. Could be interesting to see what kind of um, fantasy booking ideas we come up with for this one. So, yeah, looking forward to it. Gentlemen, yeah. Rohit, Alfonso, how are you? I'm not too bad. Uh, in terms of political wrestling opinions, I'm a little bit annoyed, but that's a story for another time. <laughs> <laughs> what about you, Alfonso? <laughs> uh, I'm just surprised about that response. Uh, I'm a little <laughs> bit scared. I'm a little bit scared about this this idea because I'm not very familiar with the TNA roster, but I have a few picks that I want to choose and move around, and I think it's going to do great. I think you forgot to add AW also to the mix. I did mention AW, yeah, yeah. So we're going to pick yeah. one from each of AW, New Japan, and TNA. And I'm like you, Alfonso. I'm a little <laughs> bit unfamiliar with mainly the New Japan roster. I'm okay with TNA. Yeah. And AEW, so it could be interesting. Rohit is obviously our New Japan expert, so I'm sure he's gonna probably laugh at some of our picks, maybe. But it's gonna. I be mean, j- just there. pick what the WWE guy you feel like would do well or would need like a scene change or something, and then try to pick someone equivalent that you think, oh, he's around similar like Cardish level that WWE could fill that spot with and try and do something with even if you're not too familiar, or someone you would want to see, really. Exactly, because there are superstars in each promotion that would probably really excel in WWE, and um, sure. maybe some superstars in WWE that would do really well in those promotions too. So mm-hmm. let's start with probably start? the more <laughs> well-known company out of the three, which is AEW. Yep. So... You want to start, Alfonso? Yeah. Okay, so pick one superstar from AEW that you want to trade to WWE. Oof, 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 oof. MJF. <laughs> oh, you motherfucker. That was my <laughs> I think everyone had to run one Yeah, I, that was the easy one. And you made me go first with that one. <laughs> oh. I was I was going to pick a guy from TNA to move to WWE, and it was going to be a nice pick. But you decided that you wanted Alfonso to steal your thunder once again. I think you want to get your TNA pick. We're doing one. Yeah. We'll see. <laughs> we'll, we'll we'll stick. Well, yeah, we'll stick with AEW now. Like, okay, so why MJF Alfonso? I mean, it's pretty obvious, really, isn't it? I think his promo style. Can work wonders in WWE. I think he needs a bigger audience, and I think that his wrestling style is not as flashy as the New Japan Pro Wrestling style. And I think he's a guy who loves stories, and that's WWE for you. Long story storytelling, and I think it's great. I think I would love to have him over there, and maybe mix with Punk. Once again, because I love that rivalry. Yeah, I'm completely with you. He was my pick. Um, Craig, our one-stop GM, he doesn't think MJF would do that well in WWE. He thinks he'd be a mid-carder, which is really interesting, because I don't. I'm with you, Alfonso. I think he's got all the tools to succeed in that company. And he's probably one of the only 
sort of homegrown talents that has really gotten over in AW um, to such a good level. But I can't pick him as per the rules because you have. I have to pick someone else now. <laughs> Sorry. So, <laughs> I'm. I was. I had Will Hobbs and Wardlow on my shortlist, and I love Will Hobbs. I think he's got such a great upside. But like, just because of how good he is, I'm going to pick Will Osprey. Like Will Osprey, to WWE. Yeah. 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 Even I after think... he said those things against Triple H. Yeah, but you know, Punk and Triple H hated each other as well, and they managed to sort it out. Um, I I want to. I'm going to make it happen. I I just think WWE is crying out for like a top English wrestler that they've never had an English world champion, and like we saw AEW Dynasty like like that match with Danielson was so fucking good. Like, oh my god, one of the best matches I think I've ever seen. And like he's so good in the ring, and like he may have to adapt his style a little bit. But like I think he's got a character. I think he's got some charisma, and I think he would do well given a bit of nurturing and honing by other people. I just love Osprey. Yeah, for sure. Like I think Osprey is a big time player, but I think it will be a very different Osprey if you went to see it in WWE. He's not going to be the Osprey we know. You know? Yeah, but like. It- the, like I match... don't know, I don't know, I don't know if the change has to be so much to be to have that Osprey because the Osprey we have right now in AW has some things that he lacks, and I think that's the way he tells story in a promo. Like for me, it's very difficult to get with Osprey as a promo guy. I love Osprey. I love that match with with Danielson. It's one of the best matches I have ever seen without a story. You know? Yeah. Because that's for me what's lacking. Me to put it in my top 10 of all time. Maybe it's in the top 10, maybe it's not in the top five because I needed something else about that match. But like, I was very, very amused by the match. But for me, that night, like for me, Okada and Pac was an amazing match because there was a story over there. I understand what you mean, and I'm and I'm kind of with you. But I think like Osprey has been in New Japan, I think he just needs like a couple of years to understand how to do it in front of Western television. And I think he would really excel. Um, but big scary Rohit because he left the call and I don't think he's coming back. Oh, Rohit's gone, has he? Yeah. I oh, think, wow. I, I, I think your pick just scared him off. <laughs> maybe he was going to pick Osprey. <laughs> maybe, maybe. We don't know what's going on in this crazy world. But if you want to continue, I can go again if you want. Yeah, well, hopefully he'll come back. Um, we will, we will carry on, Alfonso. So, who would you want to send from WWE to AEW? Ooh, that's a that's a very big question. That's a very difficult question because for a while I was thinking about sending Randy Orton to AEW. Oh, and I know, and I, and I know it's a, it's a crazy, it's crazy to imagine Randy Orton a WWE guy. In AW, but I think that's what's interesting. It's like seeing Hogan in WCW, you know. It, it was like that, a power move like that. Yeah. And but then, I, but then I was thinking a little bit more, and I was really, really. There we go. Rohit is back. Rohit is back. <laughs> yes. Welcome yeah. back. Yeah. So I'm Sorry not going to pick anyone, and I'm going. To... Your picks, but for some reason I, I didn't know I got disconnected from the call. Even though I could still hear you clearly. So. Like, like we know, we know you were scared because she chose Osprey, <laughs> and but yeah, I'm not going. I'm not going to pick anyone because it's your turn. So yeah, yeah, to... we'll come back. We'll come back to you, Alfonso. So we'll go to you, Rohit. Who from <laughs> AEW do you want to send to WWE? Uh, probably Ricky Starks. Good pick, I think. Yeah, good pick. Yeah. No wait, I mean, wait. We, he's got we were saying, his... we were saying WWE to AEW. No, no, vice versa, no. No, because uh, Rohit hasn't yeah, done we'll his get to that. Ah, okay, okay, yeah. okay. Sorry, sorry. We'll sorry, get sorry, to yeah, that one. one. Yeah, we'll get to that I mean, one. Yeah. So, <laughs> solid wrestler. He clearly has charisma and the promo skills, and I think he just, his skill set and just everything about him. I think 
it would really suit WWE. Stick him maybe in NXT, fast track into NXT champion, and then he's gone again. He's gone. I think. I think the the anonymous general manager is is pranking us or something like that. I think he is. Well, we heard his pick, Ricky Starks. I think it's a good pick. I think that Starks has like the charisma and like the personality to really succeed in WWE. And I really, and I really like the idea that Rohit said that fast track him to the WWE, to the NXT title first. And I think yeah. NXT right now is it needs firepower. I think it's very interesting because in the draft we're going to see maybe some people go down to NXT this year. And I think if NXT can land a free agent like Ricky Starks or maybe Hook when his contract expires, that can be great for them. Yeah, it could be very interesting. There's going to be lots of chopping and changing with NXT. Um, so, Alfonso, go for your pick from WWE to <laughs> AEW. Okay, okay, okay. My pick from WWE to AEW is... Rum roll, please. Dun, dun, dun. I don't know, man. It's very difficult. <laughs> <laughs> and Rahid is back. <laughs> and Rahid's back again. I said, screw it. Uh, my laptop, for some reason, is kicking me out. So I've joined through my phone. I don't know. Hey, t- technical difficulties yeah. are a thing, guys. <laughs> Bear with us. We're going to steer this shit back on track. So, <laughs> Rohit, we got your pick. Ricky yeah. Starks. It's a great shout. We're now going to do um, AW, sorry, WWE to AEW. And yeah. Alfonso is trying to make a pick, but it sounds like he's undecided. So come on, Alfonso, okay. give us a name. <laughs> okay, my name is Karen Cross. Ooh. Interesting. Because, because I really loved him in NXT when he first arrived. I loved him in the, in the Indies. But the guy needs a full reset. And I think the best reset you can do right now is changing companies because it's something that you can't do right now. Yeah. And I think he will do wonders with a hard reset and maybe have him go bold again. I don't like Karen Cross with hair. He looks like a weird dad that is going to sell me crypto coins <laughs> or something like that. I don't like him. <laughs> uh, I prefer him bold. And being a badass with Scarlet by his side and black and white and everything. Maybe he can go black and white and meet with Tony Storm and they go like, what the fuck is going on? And then there you go. You can book that. I'm <laughs> I'm going to have to disagree with your pick, Alfonso. I don't, <gasps> think, I don't think it would work for Karrion Cross. I think he would get lost in the shuffle. I think if guys like Miro and like Lance Archer can't get a spot on the card, I don't think there's much room for Karrion Cross. Um but you never know. You never know. This is the beginning. This is the beginning of my heel turn. So you know. <laughs> <laughs> Please don't turn heel, Alfonso. <laughs> right, Ro- Rohit from WWE to AEW. What's your pick? Oh, um, I think someone that would mesh well with the style can probably teach him a thing or two about mic skills, and would just probably have a blast there. Seth freaking Rollins. Oh, that's like one of the strongest picks you could make, really, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, he said multiple times he'd love for Kenny Omega and Will Ospreay to come to WWE, and he's he's admitted that they are really good, and he's given him their flowers, and he's of course like credited uh, like Marufuji Naomichi for the curb stomp and things like that. So he knows his wrestling. He's been a Ring of Honor guy. So he knows the business and he loves n- not just the WWE, he just loves professional wrestling. And I think he can make some magic with AEW and the guys there. Like like I mentioned, Kenny Omega, Will Ospreay, have another run with uh, Dan- uh, Brian Wallace and, and yeah. Wait, I have another pick because Ooh, now, I realize, now I realize that Karen Cross is not a good pick. So, no, uh, it's not. Sorry, <laughs> okay, I'm going to go with an easy one because I think he will love to go over there. And he's Kevin Owens. Yeah. That would, I think that could work, yeah. Definitely could work, yeah. He's a, he's a big, big name. And like Rohit said with Seth, he's got all the 
ROH background that you know he would have worked with a lot of the guys there. So yeah, Friends exactly. with the book. It's a better pick than Carrion Cross, Alfonso. <laughs> well done. Yeah. Thank he you. He was very friends much. with the books as well. So my my pick is um <laughs> this is gonna be interesting for you, I think, to hear this one. So what AEW need for me is star power. They don't mm-hmm. have any stars, in my opinion. They don't have guys who move the needle. Um so they need they need a star. They need someone that can possibly move the needle. Are you um, going to say CM Punk? Because CM no, Punk can no. move a needle. <laughs> no, no. I'm, I'm actually going to say John <laughs> Cena. Ooh. Interesting. Yeah. <laughs> Obviously, he's over no. the hill and on the way down. Mm. No. But, you know, he's at the end of his career. You know, he's... It, He's never going to make the move, is he? Let's be honest. Let's be completely yeah. honest. He's never going to go. He's a WWE lifer, but this is fantasy booking. And I think he would just draw so many casual eyes to the product. Um, he would have to have some kind of like run there, like extended run for at least a couple of months to get the viewership up, which it hasn't been doing over the past year. Mm. And then maybe AEW can build on something like that. Yeah. So yeah, my pick was John Cena purely to move the needle. You were Makes shooting sense. me because of Karen Cross pick, and this is the worst pick I've ever heard. <laughs> no, it's life. not. He's one of the oh, biggest let's stars move on. ever. Let's move on. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> we'll go right from TNA to WWE. So I'm going to go first this time. No. <laughs> yes. So my pick from TNA to WWE. Now, technically, they're still there, although I think. They are about to move to AEW, but technically they're still there, so this counts. And that is the Motor City Machine Guns. Ah. Mm. I don't know if it counts because they're already free agents. <laughs> 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 I mean, it could go on to your sleeper pick if we get time from any other okay, okay. companies, but it depends if we get the time. <laughs> I love them. They're one of the best mm. tag teams of the past 20 years. Yeah, and they yeah do great I think it was a big miss. It was a big mistake by WWE not to push harder for them. Yeah. I think they will be a great addition to the tag team division. And imagine those guys against the Chris brothers now being heels with Chad Gable. That will be magic, man. Magic. Mm-hmm. Yeah, love them. They're great. A, a fantastic tag team. And they, they'll do well wherever they go. Um, yeah. Rohit, we'll go to you next. Sorry, Alfonso. So, <laughs> hmm, do I go A or B in... I'm going to go A, and both of the guys I've had on my shortlist, I guess. Um, I'm surprised WWE haven't, like, picked them up yet. Maybe they just haven't looked, or maybe they just the offer hasn't come in. I don't know. But the one I'm going for is Moose. Ah, the current TNA world champion. Yeah. It's, again, he, he's everything I feel like that WWE won. Plus, he's got in ring experience. He's been in Japan, he's been in Ring of Honor, obviously, TNA I'm... for a long time. And he's got that NFL background that they like. They like those legit athletes from crossover sports. And he's, he's got the pretty... size and, and the look, hasn't he? Size, look. His yeah. almost skills are like good and way better than his Ring of Honor days. So he's improved in that. And just like his charisma and like his presence is pretty good he's like ready made for wwe so i'm surprised they haven't approached him yet maybe they will soon who knows but i don't like it (laughs) because because it will be just another bobby lashley i mean booking wise potentially depend on how they book him but i mean yeah that's the thing that's the thing like like if if you think about the ecosystem of Mm -hmm. wwe where do you put Moose? In the US title? In the... I mean, inter- 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 like, he's not going to go for a, for a world title. Yeah, I mean, personally, I would probably have him in NXT first and give him the NXT title as soon as possible. And then yeah. after that, have him be pushed down to the main monster like they're likely going to do with Ilya Dragunov and Camilla Hayes around this time. Like next year or something, if he was to sign now or something like that. <laughs> That's the only issue think. for me is Moose is like I think he's like thirty nine or forty years old. Yeah, that is true. But I mean, they've got all the stars still going strong, and I feel like in modern day science, like 
there's a lot of guys still going strong. Like Satoshi Kojima, he's like 55 or something like that. And he's the <laughs> MLW world champion right now. So <laughs> Interestingly, yeah. it was uh, Moose's birthday yesterday. So happy Ooh. birthday, Moose. Yeah, yesterday. I didn't know that. Happy birthday. <laughs> um, <laughs> it's not a bad pick at all, Rohi. Mm-hmm. Uh, so Alfonso, we'll come to you. What's your guy from or girl from TNA that you want in WWE? This pick, I believe, is going to have a lot of eyes in WWE. I think he can be a pretty nice intercontinental champion you say or a US thinking. champion. I believe in him. Yes. And if I say his name, he's going to appear. And I think to Henry... <laughs> that I was like, my B That's why I didn't like, go for that. <laughs> I, I knew you were thinking about Alfonso. <laughs> I knew yeah, you were like, like, you guys know that I'm a huge Joe Henry fan. Yeah. Like... That's why I if I could meet here. him one day, I just sing with him that song <laughs> and get drunk in a karaoke bar, that would yeah. be like bucket list, you know, for me. <laughs> and, and I really want to see Joe Henry singing his song in a stadium full of people. You know, mm. imagine, imagine, imagine the backstage segment with people going. Say his name, Joe Henry, and things like that. I think it will be so much fun. I think the comedy yeah. of Joe or Joe Henry is the comedy that WWE needs. They can do so much with him. Very good, like very yeah. good. Yeah, it's a nice pick, Alfonso. That's why I left it for Alfonso because I knew. No, I was ninety percent sure he would go for it, so that's why I went for the Moose option instead. <laughs> Thank you, well Rohit. Rohi. <laughs> <laughs> so we'll go from. WWE to TNA. So I'll go first again. Carrion Cross, incidentally, was on my uh, shortlist, but I have gone for Ricochet. Oh. Um, I just think he could have like a Mustafa Ali kind of run, like yeah, like smaller guys that they clearly have been in WWE a while, like Ricochet, and mm. they're never really going to get past a certain point. Um, yeah. While Ricochet is great to watch, I just think he could do so much more in TNA. Hundred percent, yeah, yeah, um, yeah. Great pick. I think I think it's a great pick, mm-hmm. and very yeah, just yeah, just great. Suit suits TNA well, I think. So um, yeah, yeah. What about you, Rohit? WWE to TNA. I'm gonna go with someone. Who might finally be getting a little bit of momentum in WWE, but I feel like is he would just speed up his momentum if he went to TNA, and that is Chad Gable. Oh no! Give no. him the perfect angle, right? No. no, keep him in WWE. <laughs> just starting to get really, really hot now. It's true. Yeah, but... he's he's <laughs> going to get the perfect angle. A character right now with the Creed exactly, brothers. So... But I think he'll just do so well in TNA. He'll just hit the ground running and he'll just... No, I think, I, Rohit, Rohit, I think this is another moment when I go and say, Rohit, go to the corner. <laughs> no, nope, I five minutes, I'm standing by ground. Go. I'm standing by <laughs> <my> ground. <laughs> I fucking love Shad Gable. Yeah. He is awesome. And he would do amazing wherever he went. Mm, but right now, sure. I want him to get of this course. push. Of course, right now he's getting the push. That and and you know, you know something? something. Hopefully, but yeah. Rohit, I will not send him to TNA. But <laughs> if you have said Chad Gable to New Japan, I will say yes. <laughs> I mean, they do have working relationship. Exactly. <laughs> so, what about you, Alfonso? WWE to TNA. WWE to TNA. I will say this: this is only one. It's a girl that needs to move on from WWE. I think she has done everything. She has beaten every single world record. And it's Natalia. Mm. I think, mm. I think yeah, the that... women's division over there in TNA can really use a girl like Natalia. And I think she's great. But for TNA, you know, she's no longer great for WWE. I don't think there is a place for her anymore in the roster. But I think mm. she could excel. Maybe we're a world champion in TNA. Yeah. That's actually a great pick. Yeah, you're right. She, there's nothing more for her. To I do think they WWE. have nothing for her because they there's... don't want to put any of the titles on her either. She's been there for 15, 15 years, I think. Yeah, probably, probably a bit more. True. Yeah. Yeah, she she'd be a great addition to their um, roster. I think. Good pick. For sure. So, um, right, we'll go to New Japan. From so from New Japan to WWE, who do we want to see traded 
over and who would make um, good impact on the WWE roster. We'll start with the expert, Rohit. Who's your New Japan pick? Mm, again, I have two standouts, but I think the one that would succeed the most is probably Evil. Oh, okay. Just because he's got that character, he has a gimmick with the whole WWE effects, they can do so much. And since he speaks decent English, like Nakamura, decent English, maybe even better than Nakamura, I'm not too sure, but, you know, he speaks decent English. And, you know, with WWE willing to do subtitles and video packages, they could do some really good and eerie and creepy stuff with evil. And, you know, he's proven he's got a character, he can be a cheating heel, he can be a more of a tough man's character. It just depends what you want to do, but I think he's got all the tools that WWE would want and he could be quite successful there. Even if it is just like on the upper mid-card level and he doesn't become world champion, I still think that's very successful for someone like Evil. So, yeah. Good pick, yeah. Yeah, so we'll um, we'll go to Alfonso. What's your pick, pick. Alfonso? My pick is, 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 I'm going to book it. <laughs> <laughs> so we're backstage in NXT. They just announced they're going to do a house show in Japan. So they're going to Japan. And we got a, a backstage segment with Chase U. You know Chase U? Have you seen the segments with Chase U? Uh, I have not, no. But... I haven't, no. Okay, it's like an university. You have this guy called Andy Chase, and he has oh. all these wrestlers that go to class with him. And in the end of every segment, he curse them out. He curse them and things like that. And they use like college, university costumes, you know? Okay. So they're going to Japan and they need to learn Japanese. So before going to Japan, there is a guy who arrives with a DVD. To how to learn Japanese and it's Tori <laughs> And I think that's how you present Tori to the American audience. And then you have him go to the main roster with R Truth mm-hmm. and have this amazing run with comedy with R Truth. That would be and fun. Re- and, and let's remember that he he beat John Maxley one time. So I want him to beat Seth Rollins and then beat Roman Reigns so he can beat all the shields. <laughs> <laughs> that would be fun. I mean, he beat. I think. I think he beat Kenny Omega when he was champion as well in the. G- yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, like if if, if, if you see, if you see some matches of Toriano, you're like, how the hell did he? I mean, he's a former. To get uh, to I go think over. he's a former high school collegiate wrestler as well, which you wouldn't have expected if you haven't watched this stuff. So <laughs> there you go. Uh, yeah. So. So for me, it's Toriano because I think that guy is super fun mm-hmm. and I would love him to have him a, a little run in WWE. Why not? Yeah, great. That's definitely a, a different kind of pick, Alfonso. I love it. Um, <laughs> right. So my pick, um, I have Zack Sabre Jr. and Jeff Cobb on my shortlist. Mm-hmm. I'm not going to go with those, even though I love Zack Sabre Jr.'s ring work. He's And Jeff Cobb has a great look. I think Jack um, Sabre Jr. I don't know. I think WWE, at least main roster, would find him a bit weird. Sadly. Yeah, I, that. Yeah, I agree. That's why I haven't gone with him. He'd work yeah. better in maybe like AEW or TNA. Mm. Um, <laughs> what I've gone with mm-hmm. is the feud, the hottest feud in wrestling right now, is going to come to reality. Jack Perry to mm-hmm. WWE. So we can finally I... have that match with CM Punk. <laughs> but 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 Jack Perry is back in in AEW. <laughs> but he's still technically a New Japan guy as well. I don't think so. <laughs> Alex, I think this the is. <laughs> what? Why are you? Been... No, no, you're you, you're cheating this week. What, <laughs> what are you doing? No, he's appeared on both shows. Google <laughs> New Japan roster and Jack. You'll find okay, Jack Perry okay, on there. Okay, you chose the motor machine guns that are free agents. You chose Jack Perry that he appeared in in Dynasty and he's back in AW. And you picked John Cena to go to AW. What's wrong with you this week? Alfonso's laying out podcast court right now. Yeah, well, John Cena would be awesome in AW. And oh, Jack no. Perry <laughs> versus CM Punk is the match at the moment. <laughs> it, okay, if I can't have him, I'll go with Jeff Cobb. <laughs> fair enough. Right. Let, let, fair, fair. That's, let's fair. That's fair. That's fair. That's fair. We'll have, we'll have Jack for Alex pick. We have Jack 
Perry Asterix Jeff Cobb. <laughs> <laughs> so WWE uh, New Japan, Rohi, you go first. I mean, um, the reason why I didn't go Chad Gable here is because I wanted Gunther here. So Gunther. Oh. What else did I have to say? The oh. only the only thing I can say is if he does go, which obviously he's not, but if he did in our world, I get to say Walter again. <laughs> Oh, I missed Walter. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I mean, he lo- he loves wrestling. He's obviously his character of like respect in the ring, bringing honor to the sport. His style would work, and J- Japanese fans would love him hundred percent. And he can do that old school, like old Japan style in the eighties and nineties. Yeah, do the new school style. He can do the current style. He'd just be great. I don't really. Have he'd to have to. Anything. He'd have, have to win knows. every title there. Where yeah. he goes. All at once. He probably would. He probably could. Yeah. <laughs> He's amazing. He's one of the best in the world right yeah, now. Um, great pick. Alfonso, what about you? I was thinking about Chad Gable, like I told you before, but yeah. I want him in WWE. One guy that I can see going to New Japan and then maybe coming back after in WWE, like maybe going for three years to New Japan, mm. and I think it will do wonders for him, is Seth Rollins. Yeah, that's another... yeah. Imagine, like imagine Seth Rollins going over there, changing his style a little bit, learning some new things, having some those magic matches that he wants to have. Yeah. Maybe he can he can have a match with Osprey over there. Maybe he can have a match with Omega over there. Maybe he can have a rematch with John Moxley at mm-hmm. Tokyo Dome for the title. That would be awesome. I would oh, love to man. see Good. Seth Rollins versus Yota Suji. Like, I think that would be a barn burner. Oh, honestly. Like and 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 maybe is to have him change the style can help him with this with his knees problem, you know. Potentially, yeah. It's a great yeah. pick. Like Roll, he's like he probably is the best wrestler in WWE, isn't he? Let's be fair. In the ring. Yeah, yeah my my, my allowed him to showcase that within WWE very well. Yeah, it's a great pick, mm-hmm. Alfonso. Yeah. My um, slipper pick, my slipper pick was oh. Was AJ Styles to go back to have one last run over there? That was mine for TNA as well. Like I, I think he could have one more run there too before he calls it up. Yeah, cool. but yeah, see, my pick, my pick from uh, WWE to New Japan. See, on on my shortlist, I had Shinsuke Nakamura. Interestingly, okay. Oh, um, uh-huh. I also had Ilya Dragunov. I think he'd do well there. Yeah, but I've gone for Charlotte Flair. Hmm. I think. She's done everything there is to do in WWE. I think some fans get a little bit tired of her sometimes, like, but like, let's not, you know, beat around the bush. She's fucking amazing, like, for sure. At what she does, like, she's mm. brilliant. I think it's just the way they booked her, like, straight away to be like, the yeah, me too. Superstar yeah, me too. That... I think, yeah, I want to see, I want to see the real Charles Flair. I want to see the baby face Charles Flair. The one that loves the business, the one that she does everything because his brother died and she's fulfilling his dream. Yeah. So I want to see that side of Charlotte Flair that we never see on TV mm-hmm. because she's such a good heel that we never see that other side. Yeah. But I yeah, think, and like, I think... right now when she comes back, she deserves to have a, that this baby face run. I think yeah. we could we could see something like that in if she went to New Japan and certainly even to go there for like a couple of years and then to come back and for everybody to have just, you know, in WWE missed her and want her, want her back rather than seeing her on screen all the time. Yeah. I think it could work. Um, That's why I was excited when Andrade was still in AEW because he was also doing like me- in Mexico, like wrestling there. And I was like, mm, if Charlotte does decide to leave now to be closer with Andrade, she could go to Mexico, see MLL to play with depending on which one Andrade is at. Obviously, AEW would be not. CMLL, CMLL. La Sombra. Yeah, last one. Was La Sombra is CMLL. Yeah, but yeah. I think he did appear like in a AAA show like ages ago, like towards the start of his AEW run. Oh, uh, yeah, but that yeah. was the beginning. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So obviously, recently, it's more CMLL and historically, of course, yeah. Okay. Yeah, so, I mean, those are all our picks. Um, do we have one sleeper pick you want to throw in quickly? Ooh, you know what? Since WWE want to break into the Asian market, someone that I can think of is Jake Lee. It's Julia. 
Julia is the obvious <laughs> one, but I was going to go with Jake Lee because um, he's a Japanese-born Korean, so he's got Korean heritage, but he's also a Japanese citizen. And he's like, he's around six foot four, so he's a pretty tall guy, and he's a solid wrestler. And because he's got the Korean and Japanese influence, I feel like he would be a great addition if they want to break into that market kind of thing. So, maybe, yeah, yeah. Alfonso, have you got any? Ah, I was thinking about Brian Danielson going to WWE again for one oh. last run. I think, I think him having another run under Triple H could be great. And it's just because I want to see CM Punk against Danielson because we never get it in AEW and I really wanted to Here's see that, thing. to be honest. You reckon Triple H would be open once Danielson goes like part-time, I guess. Uh, yeah, like maybe yeah. Or one-off I match, think, even if it's just I not think, run by a one-off match. I I think that's why I want him over there because he can just appear from time to time in a SummerSlam or Romania. You can have him have the Undertaker treatment. He just comes around and just face somebody at WrestleMania. Then he goes away and things like that. And I don't know, man. Like I love Danielson so much that I would love to see him over there. I also, think that could work. He's so good in the ring. He would yeah. have a fantastic match every if he did it once a year. Mm. And also, yeah. of course, another sleeper pick for me was Jordan Grace in WWE. Yeah, I thought but, about Jordan Grace as well. Yeah. But I don't want her to get mixed, to get uh, lost in the mix. And also, if we are really, really fantasy booking, I would love to see the lead in WWE just to have the new day over there. But I think right now, with CM Punk being in WWE, I think it's easier to see Austin Creed, Kofi Kingston go into the AW and have some matches with the elite, that could be great. Mm. Interesting, yeah. Um, if I had to throw one out there, it would be a creative one, uh, not a, like a wrestler. Mm. What about Paul, Paul Heyman to AW? That would be pretty great, I think, yeah, for sure. Just for depends what role he would like fulfill. Would he be like, save them. a matchmaker? Would he be manager or... Uh, he could be both. He could be could booker be and on screen manager. Yeah. <laughs> but I think and Tony Khan would have to listen to him, though. <laughs> the, the, that's the interesting thing, isn't it? But I feel like Eamon's clearly a smart guy, and obviously he spotted guy like he did try and encourage Will Ospreay to go to WWE early on. So I think he'd understand what they need. Yeah, I yeah. I think he'll convince Tony somehow. Heyman is one of the best minds, isn't he? Yeah, um, for sure. And I, I think it'd be interesting if he was to go. That's a good shout. Yeah. Wow. yeah. That's a great shout. Yeah. Thank you. See, I redeem myself, Alfonso. Thank you very much. <laughs> well, there you have it, guys. That was um, that was our fantasy trades between the various companies. Um, loads of fun on this show, guys. So um, mm-hmm. thank you so much. As always, to Rohit and Alfonso been brilliant again guys thank you thank you thank you uh, don't forget to like and subscribe to one stop wrestling on youtube follow us on facebook and twitter and go and check out all our podcasts um we have a blast doing them and until next time we'll see you all for another one stop wrestling podcast ciao guys ciao ciao